Dinks. Welcome back to episode 13 of the Pair of Dinks podcast. I'm Jake. I'm Chantel. And we are the Pair of Dinks that <laughs> host this podcast. <laughs> oh, and this week we're going to talk about cooking. Making food. A little bit. A little bit of what we might know. Yeah. And we thought of that because last week we were talking about chicken sandwiches and eating food. <laughs> and we both came to cooking from very different backgrounds. And it's led to really fun times in the kitchen. And we thought we would just discuss food and our love of food and cooking and how it can help your budgets and how we use cooking to be a fun thing in our life. <laughs> So let's start. Chantel, how did you start cooking? Oh, well, um, my mom raised four kids, and she never really cared for cooking. Mm. So, um, you know, she didn't really teach us how to cook, but we learned in high school at, in foods class. Um, but I didn't really care for cooking at all. So um, at a young age, we had to fend for ourselves so we just you know ate all the easy stuff <laughs> <laughs> and then um when i was in my early 20s and moved out um my ex's mom taught me how to cook nice. some different stuff because i was living with them and um i had to bring something to the table you know every once in a while so that's when I finally started to get into it. But I've never really, I don't know, food has been kind of a funny thing with me. I've never really felt like um, I needed it. <laughs> like I could, I'm not one of those people to um, eat, overeat, eat a lot. Um, I would be the opposite. I would just kind of like ignore it, um, which is also not good either. So I ate out of sustenance or um, flavor. Mm. Yeah. I am a slave to cravings. And what other flavors besides vinegar? Because I know that's like your favorite. Salt. Salt and vinegar. I love, I do love vinegar. But salt. Ooh. All Mm. the salty snacks. (laughs) Yeah. So it was um, pretty simple that way. Mm Mm-hmm. And then since we've gotten together, we've um, dived into different meals than what I was, you know, cooking every day, just regular easy stuff before. Mm -hmm. What was something we've made that uh, maybe you thought was like a challenge before we made it? Maybe you were wondering, how are we going to make this? Or this seems really difficult. Well, all that comes to mind is pizza just because you make the dough, Mm -hmm. which is still hard because you have to roll it out and be a pizza man. (laughs) You know, you do twirl the dough and throw it around my head and not hit the ceiling. Make it all (laughs) pizza like (laughs) so. But other things take just like a really long time. Hmm. Some some recipes. I can name any for you. We've done. We've you mean the things things. that I make compared to things you made before? It's some things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I hate waiting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's the hard part with that cooking is you gotta sometimes make things before you're actually hungry for them. Mm-hmm. Or it sucks because you're hungry for them the whole time. So the, like all twelve hours that it's cooking down, you're like, I just want to eat it now. <laughs> but how did you get into cooking? My mom made us learn. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that to sound sinister. Um, she she grew up in a house of five kids, so she's one of five kids. Three of the kids are boys, so her three brothers. Um, they never really got the learn to cook lessons from mom (laughs) it was pretty much my mom and her sister they were the only ones that were taught to cook and expected to like help make the meals and such and uh, when we were younger she told us her brothers really struggled when they first got out on their own with cooking and you know some of them got married early but you know like her brother Kurt got divorced and 
and then he was finding himself sort of, you know, 30s or 40s on his own again. Doesn't know, not, how, to doesn't know how to make himself. much food for himself. <laughs> you know, like they can all do basics for sure. But, um, you know, so she, I don't know, that was her mission as mom early on. She was like, I want my sons to be able to cook a handful of things on their own when they get out. Don't want them to be struggling or, or unable to fend for themselves. Yeah. Cool part was my brother and I started to really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So it was never much of a, it was never a drag. It was always a fun thing that we would all do together. And then, you know, once we got older and we discovered the barbecue and fire cooking, <laughs> it became even more fun and dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my mom really instilled it. And then I was also blessed with another friend in high school who we were really into uh, duck hunting, but also doing some cooking of our own, mostly fire cooking, like really primitive cooking stuff or deep frying. <laughs> he didn't he didn't like nutritional things very much, <laughs> like fruits and vegetables. He never yeah. ate them. So we always just made meat and meats and breads and potatoes and oh, <laughs> just all the foods that my mom didn't want us to have. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Yeah, just got into it. I don't know. My mom tried to teach us everything, like how to. Here's how to make some sauces and some soups, and do some basic baking, and like have a well well rounded. Well, and career. you're Italian too. Mm-hmm. Which so. she learned a lot of Italian recipes yeah. from her mom, so that was why I think I learned a lot of Italian cooking that way. Yeah. Just by learning alongside my mom. Because she was just making things that her mom taught her. So, what are you going to make? Like, yeah, of course we're making lasagna. Of course. Yeah. Eggplant parmesan. Ooh, I still love that. Your own pasta. Mm-hmm. Actually, I brought that one to the table. We had never made our own pastas. And then I became desperate to learn something new after learning to make pizzas. Which, okay, so learning to make pizzas, though, I learned that in a restaurant. So I worked at a little deli slash pizza shop. It was this funky corner store that had a half like restaurant cafe section to it. And we would make pizzas in there. So I learned to make uh, pizzas so you that brought way. that dough recipe to your mom? No? No. Oh, oh, that's just how you I mean, all pizza dough it. recipes are pretty much the same. Yeah. The one I use now, I think we actually, I can't remember where we stole that one from. I want to say it was something kind of embarrassing, like Bobby Flay or something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of molded it a little bit to be our own. But we liked it because you don't always have to let this one sit as long. Okay. Like the dough we did at the restaurant, you would have to let it sit overnight. Otherwise, it would never stretch. Oh, okay. So this dough recipe that we use now, we use it mainly because you can still put it together in the morning and make a pizza in the evening. It won't be the best. Like it is best overnight, but... You can still do it if you need to. Okay. So that's, And it's easy to whisk together. So <laughs> The one at the restaurant required a lot more. Right. A lot more attention, manual labor. Yeah. But it helped me learn how to work with the dough, like those hand skills. Yeah. Although you can still roll it out with a rolling pin. You don't have to <laughs> use your hands. I like to tease people, though. <laughs> Make them think that they can't. <laughs> well. Just, just so I can one-up them. I haven't so tried. So selfish. You did once. Yeah, well, you do I pretty good. Tried since. <laughs> it's really, and I think people should learn some basic baking because it can, like, once you learn the basics of it, like if you perfect one thing. For me, it was kind of pizza dough that became my baking thing. I'm like, okay, I know how to make pizza dough pretty consistently. It's always going to deliver. <laughs> It'll, you know, like I have my favorite versions, but I can always make some good pizza dough, and I think that's. It's so important to have some basic skills like that. And as we were um, mentioning the last episode, too, you've been doing a lot more baking. Mm -hmm. So so we decided to skip on buying bread from the store this past grocery shop so that Jake could make us just some buns for bunwiches and whatnot throughout the week. Yeah. And it's been great. Well, and that's why I think you should master one thing that that you can bake all the time because it becomes such an easy way to then learn how to make other things. 
yeah. So and for me, it wasn't a big leap we... jumping into making some buns because I'm like, oh, I already know how to make pizza dough. So much of the process is the same. There's just a tweak to the ingredients. Yeah, and you usually have most of those ingredients on hand anyways. I think mm-hmm. the only thing is um, probably not good for you <laughs> all the time, right? What a... Like the buns that, you, that you're making? It's no different than any other bread. Okay. Like, well, just bread in general, I guess. Um, yeah, whatever your <laughs> nutritional stance bread. on bread is. Well, we eat a lot of bagels, actually. <laughs> uh, we eat a lot of bagels. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I was going to say, they're so cheap. Like, It's part of the awesome thing with baking is that I realize it's a, it's a more intensive process. Like, It takes a lot more time and energy and effort to make it. But the ingredients themselves are so cheap. So when I go to the store and I see a $5 loaf of bread... I go, oh, my God, like you could make that for less than a dollar in ingredients. Right. You just got to be willing to put in like half a day, mm-hmm. you know. And I, the thing I find crazy with breads is they take a long time, but it's not a lot of your actual effort. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like kneading just... that dough together with your hands takes a while. And, you know, you'll feel a little tired after 10 minutes of doing that. But that's pretty much the bulk of your manual effort. Everything else is put it on the counter and let it sit for an hour. Pull it out, punch it around for five minutes, <laughs> let it sit for another hour. You know, like it takes four hours, but you're doing, yeah, you know, 20 minutes of work yeah. over that four hours, if even. So that's what's awesome about bread and fulfilling. Yeah. And you just realize, wow, look at how much we could cut down on costs. And waste. Yeah. Speaking of waste, we made some apple crisp yesterday because mm. we had l- we should not have made apples. that <laughs> oh, that's good. i mean that in the best way possible because it was so delicious and i probably ate about half of the pan yesterday how big is that pan do you think i think it's a nine by nine or eight by eight so that was really good and it takes me back because that's one of the first things you learn in foods class in high school oh was it yeah that's awesome. but this was better because we didn't have oats um, so we used your mom's homemade granola. Insomniac granola. Yeah. She will want you to know. Yeah. And uh, because I don't like the cranberries, dried fruit, we picked those out. But it was, it, that's the, oh my God. And the topping so to a apple crisp, for those who may not know, is literally just sugar, flour, butter, oat, and cinnamon. Yeah. Maybe some nutmeg for some people. Yeah. I was thinking we should have put some vanilla in with the apples mixed before, but oh well. Oh, that'd be good. Next yeah. time. Oh my God. But yeah, it's just this, it turns into the, you know, buttery, sugary, crunchy, cinnamony, and then so mixed with the sweetness of the apple, yum. that mushy, soft, like you cooked them just perfectly too. Because the apples weren't complete mush. Well, and thankfully they were nice you, and had, soft. you asked, to put, or you had said to put it in more, what, five, ten more minutes? And yeah, I just a wanted a little idea. more crisp on the top. That's all I was looking at. <laughs> that was a good idea, though. But that was good. So we're trying to, you know, in an effort to not waste either. We're we're trying to get a bit more creative with what we have on hand. Hmm. I think it's a. Um. I forget who I was talking with this. I'm talking about this with. Oh my gosh, I cannot English <laughs> today. Um, but I love playing this game of open the fridge and just see what needs to be used and turn it into something Mm -hmm. and i think that is such a fun game that you can only begin to play when you know a little bit of cooking and i think that would be um a great way for people to begin reducing that waste right because you'll begin looking in the fridge and you say okay like i have to use this yeah and then you just begin to think how can i turn this into something that will will be a whole yeah. dish tonight or I'll something I'll like, enjoy. How can I enjoy uh, this? If we have like, so for example, chicken and um, I don't know, cauliflower. Mm-hmm. I'll just uh, put those two things into Google too and just ask, ask it to give me some recipe ideas. And then you just tweak it with what you got. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's so good. And it also helps you meal plan through the week too. Mm-hmm. A hundred percent. Until you're like, oh, shit, we need some groceries. <laughs> yeah. Well, in a struggle I found, I think it's, well, it's both for years of living on my own, but even with us together still, 
um, I find that a lot of the portions in the grocery store are often so much more than I ever actually need. So I almost feel like I have to come up with a few dishes involving whatever ingredients I'm going to buy. Yeah. Because I'm buying enough for, you know, six plates of food when really I'm only thinking of two plates. Yeah, definitely. And it was even harder when it was just one of you. Yeah. <laughs> You were like, man, this world is not built to just feed one person. Yeah. But, um, and I th- and that's beautiful too. That's good. I'm glad we have a lot of food, but we're just trying to get more economical about it. Mm-hmm. And making our, our own broth is awesome too. Mm. Yeah. That it's was a game changer. I ever, never, ever thought about it before either. And I use broth all the time. I love broth. It makes everything a little more flavorful. All you do is save your scraps, your bones and your vegetable scraps. Put them in a bag, a freezer bag, put them in the freezer until you're ready to uh, till it's full. Right? Yeah. Or even about halfway. If you have a gallon freezer bag, sometimes when it's even around half. And then we use our instant pot. And we just dump all that in there, fill it all up with water, and put it on for like 15 hours. Yeah. You could really use anything, anything that'll fit about, what is it, five liters, I think, is the Instant Pot I have. I think it fits about five liters of stuff in there. So if you dump the bag in and fill it with, you know, about four liters or so of water, keep it on a low heat for many, many hours. <laughs> And then you, you have the most incredible broth. Strain it at the end, cool it, put it in the freezer, and use it when you need to. So, and, and then so much like you get all those good nutrients that you can't get in the pre-made stuff. Yeah. Like there's so much bone marrow in there. That and then we get. you just you know compost all the all of the stuff, so it's like you're able to use it all and still dispose of it properly. Yeah, that's been a real game changer. And then you can make all these hearty soups. Yeah. And those are great for having multiple meals on hand throughout the week as well. Because mm-hmm. you make one big pot of soup and then you can have it for dinner and a couple of lunches. Mm-hmm. Or even two dinners and something if you like the soup enough. Yeah. I often get tired of soup twice in a row for dinner. Oh, yeah. But it's a great lunch. Well, you can I'm always looking for too. lighter lunches and I feel like soups, they can be hearty enough that they'll fill you. But they're also just really light on the stomach in the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if you have some fruit that you're not eating, you know, your strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, all that, just throw them in a freaking bag and put them in the freezer. Mm-hmm. We've been doing a lot of that lately, too. Yeah. Although, and the bananas you can also use in banana breads. So it's another bake. Or you can put them in your smoothies. Or we made, What did we make yesterday? Popsicles. What kind of popsicles? Banana, strawberry creamy ones so you made it sort of like a smoothie and then put it so it's like a go-gurt popsicle Mm -hmm. yeah those were so good yeah but i used some uh was it greek yogurt and almond milk greek yogurt almond milk banana and and um strawberry Strawberry. and a little bit of maple syrup to just overall sweeten it up a little more that was good too because it's supposed to be a treat so you want to make sure it's a little extra sweet another good option to avoid going to go get ice cream (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. And no. maple syrup is a great sugar alternative. I'm not saying that just because we're in Canada. <laughs> but because we're in Canada, it's so plentiful. <laughs> and I find it to be such a great sweetener. Like maple syrup and honey. I think I use those more than I ever use sugars. Like granulated. Yeah. I use the raw sugar only in coffee. Mm. And then... Brown. We yeah. We don't even. We don't have any white sugar in our house. No. Nope. Um, we have brown sugar, but we barely even use any of that. Yeah, we've really tried to stick. We use some of the baking. I still use it, so the yeast seems to prefer it, or at least it can activate quicker with those sugars okay. compared to um, the white others. Sugar. But yeah, but I might experiment with some honeys. Yeah. I think that'd be really good in some breads. Because you need just a little bit of sweetness. And again, it's 
it's not for the flavor or anything. It's chemistry, like because that's what the yeast needs. They need sugar to to do their thing to make their bubbles. <laughs> make their bubbles. That's cute. That's what they do. That's where you get all those air pockets and bread that's from cute. the yeast bubbling up. But anyhow, that's all we got on cooking so far. Um, we'll come back another time to talk about cooking with flame. Fire. Fire yeah. cooking. Maybe we should have Chev over to talk about that with Oh, with are we going to bring in a guest? Guest. <laughs> guest podcaster. That'd be fun sometime. Yeah. But yeah, my cousin's been experimenting with charcoal cooking, and it's been really fun to eat some of his experiments and and even just watch him work with that because he's a master at fire cooking. <laughs> oh, he knows the process, and it involves all the brining and stuff you do beforehand. Like, there's a whole art to getting stuff ready to be on the fire. So, all right, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.